Leela, welcome to Super Return International. Thank you. There's 5,000 here to, this year, record numbers, people really wanting to hear the latest in terms of what private equity can do. You're a head of sustainability and you have a key role in making sure that that's a big part of what this industry is feeling responsible about. Tell me about that and where you think it's at. Yeah, you know, look, I think it's a really interesting time. It's especially exciting to be here in Europe with you. Um, right now in private markets, having a focus on sustainability is critical across our industry. I would say when I think about the fund life cycle from fundraising to investing capital to deploying and deploying capital to exiting our investments and return, returning capital to our investors, we think about this across all three stages and it's never been so critical in our industry to do so. Um, I would say in fundraising, um, there's been enormous interest, of course, across Europe around sustainability and ESG efforts. But we're seeing that globally now. And so today, to be able to raise a fund, you need a credible story. Um, just to give you a sense, we actually have, um, we've, over, over the past five years, we've had about a tenfold increase in the number of inquiries that we've been getting around our ESG practices. Um, LPs want to know what we're doing, what our strategy is, and how, what reporting we can do. So. That's been interesting. I would say in our investing practices um, and just the chatter in the hallways here, um, it's just been such a huge focus, top of mind for investors around you know what a company's doing, how it's operating, how it's navigating regulation and market influence. What do you think? Some um, what do you think is motivating that? Where does that come from? That demand now, because as you say, ESG has gone right up the agenda. It's got to be an integrated part of businesses now. Why is that, and what's pushing that? You know, I think a lot of it is regulation. Here in Europe, it's mandated for every investor that's marketing a fund into Europe to have a credible story, be, um, you know, ha have your your practices uh, documented and, and, and your funds uh, tagged for certain ESG criteria. Um, but beyond that, it's actually just been a, a focus on doing business today. Um, you know, I think every investor has to look at these issues because it's actually impacting regulatory risks of investment. Um, reputational risk, climate risk, all these issues are, in, it's, it, just to be good investors at this point, you need to look at these issues. It's becoming an absolute key part in, in companies being viewed as successful and also perhaps changing this industry reputationally and that's quite important too. Yeah, I think so. I think there are a lot of great things that the private equity industry is doing around this. Um, there are a lot of initiatives, I think. Historically, private markets hasn't been as focused on these issues in comparison to public markets. This is something that every investor should be thinking about right now, just to be, you know, ha ha builds durable, strong investments for the long term. What's key to that being seen as 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 a, a deep kind of strategy rather than surface level greenwashing, if you like? What's key to that? I guess it's having proper measures in place and data will be key. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we take this very seriously at Warburg because we don't think it's ESG can be a one-size-fits-all. It can't be a siloed approach. So for every investment, we look at ESG through an EBITDA lens. Um, EBITDA, what are the different levers? And how does sustainability play into that? And I think a big piece of that, as you mentioned, is being able to measure what's happening, um, document. There's been a huge focus on disclosure. But Right now, we're kind of focusing a lot more on how that data can be used more impactfully. Um, but for, you know, to be honest, for, for uh, private markets, this is often the first time that a lot of companies are thinking about things like carbon emissions or the impact of their products. Or, you know, here in Europe, there's the what we call a double materiality lens of not only what, what your business, your impacts have on um, the environment, but also what are your the impacts of environmental social issues on your business. And so it's it's important for companies to kind of think through these things. And um, it's that's I think you know the data behind that is really critical. You mentioned it and touched on it there. The S is becoming quite sort of prominent now, mm -hmm. particularly perhaps because of the pandemic and the effects that had on the global sort of population. What have you seen in those terms. It's not just environmental that's hitting the headlines now, is it? Absolutely. I mean, I think there's all sorts of human impacts from, you know, supply chains where company people are sourcing products to the impacts of AI on, you know, thinking about bias and impacts on use of data on, in different channels. So I think these are important issues that are being focused on. Um, one initiative that we're part of is called Ownership Works which is the idea of broad-based employee ownership programs and investing in workers alongside um, you know, management teams 
to basically be able to create incentives so that everybody is um, excited and energized to grow companies. That's a huge impact from a social um, perspective when you think about wealth creation um, for all levels of uh, an organization. You're seeing more of those partnership models in portfolio companies. Yeah, we are. We're, we're, we're excited about a number of initiatives that we have on that front. Um, of course, diversity and inclusion is another focus of ours as well. Um, but yeah, so I think the social impact um, piece of it is, is top of mind for sure. So ESG has been viewed very much as sort of a factor in terms of risk mitigation uh, and perhaps getting out of certain sectors. But you can also see it in terms now of much more value creation side. Tell me about that and what your feeling is on that. Yeah, I think it's something we think a lot about. At Warburg Pincus, we really take this seriously. And we look at ESG and value in two lenses. One is thinking about protecting value for our investments. The second is creating value for investments. So for every investment, we look at it through a lens of um, what are the levers of EBITDA and how do we think about it through a sustainability lens. So from a protecting value perspective, we think about what are, what are the factors that create the resilience of a business model? Um, what's going to protect value for investment from an access to capital issue? And on, the, so on a uh, more proactive basis, we look at what are the opportunities for top line growth? Um, what are sustainable investing categories like the energy transition that we can invest in? Um, and then what are opportunities for operating levers? So where can we create energy efficiencies that link to cost savings? Or where are there, where are there um, material savings that we do that link to reduced waste? So, um, you know, there are a lot of opportunities that we've had around that. We have a great company in the UK called the AA, which has been excellent. They, they basically do roadside assistance in the UK. They're an iconic brand. They have a, a huge fleet. Um, and so you can think about decarbonizing the fleet and the challenges with that. So they've been exploring electric vehicles as an example. Um, they've been exploring how to do remote sensing of helping companies on the road without actually having to drive there and reduce their emissions that way. And, and all of this is really creating a better brand, better customer retention, but also really elevating um, the sustainability profile of the company. So that's an example of how we think about that here in the region. And I imagine tech and AI will play hugely into all of those opportunities too. Yeah, I think I think it's you know it's an interesting time where on one hand you get a lot of focus on um, use of AI, which is a very energy intensive product. On the other hand, there's a lot of efficiencies that are happening with AI to be able to reduce the amount of processes and operations. So um, it's, it's, you know, data, technology, the intersection of all these issues is something that we're thinking about in conjunction with the sustainability trends that we're following. When you come to something like this event and there's so many of your industry here, what do you hope to take away and what key conversations do you think you'll have this week? Yeah, like I think I think the space is evolving very rapidly, so it's really interesting. Um, like I was just on a panel with some emerging managers that are in more impact focus area. We're a much larger manager that's navigating a lot of different angles. Um, when we think about Europe, you know, this is this is the heart uh, heart of where sustainability was really born in many ways. So just getting a pulse of it. What's what's the market right now? Um, what are pe- what are people thinking about here on the ground? Um, it's, it's been, yeah, it's been exciting. And just finally, what do you hope somebody might take away if they've chatted to you this week? What would you like to impart while you're here? Yeah, like I, I think um, it's important. ESG and sustainability are core focuses of ours at a firm, uh, firm level. I think we think about this um, throughout our business. So in terms of how we structured our organization around ESG, um, we think about it when we engage with our portfolio companies. Um, we think about it when we're thinking about exiting our investments and, and giving attractive returns to our investors. Um, I think sustainability is something that can't be, you know, can't be a siloed approach. Like I said before, we take a very tactical approach for every investment, and we do it with a lens on value, protecting value and creating value. Um, and I think that's that's really where this industry is going. Um, it's uh, it's been, you know. It's been a lot of focus on ESG for a long time um, in Europe. I think right now we're having a much more deep, developed, and nuanced uh, perspective on these issues. Have it at the heart of what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Lena, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs>